Hello, I am one of the nurse specialists for spinal surgery. So today we're going to talk about your operation. We will be talking about what to expect before you're coming in, while you're here as an inpatient and after discharge and what to expect into regards of your recovery. Hopefully by this point you should have a date for your surgery. If not, you will get a letter in due course and it will be letting you know when to expect to come into surgery and what time and location. So in regards to what to expect beforehand, it's really important that you are optimised. The better that your health is prior to coming in, the better your recovery hopefully will be. If you do have any medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes, any sort of heart issues, it is really important to get them optimised prior to coming into surgery. And this can be done via your GP. And once every aspect of your health is under control, you should therefore be fit for surgery. Sometimes when people undergo surgery, due to the anaesthetic and pain relief that you will possibly have while coming into surgery may be a possibility that you do suffer from constipation. So just to be aware of that and also optimise any sort of bowel issues if you can by walking and optimising any sort of laxatives and water use. If you do smoke, it is advisable that this can be also addressed. And if you can stop smoking prior to surgery, it would be better for your recovery. It's also advisable to ensure you have someone to pick you up following surgery as you will be restricted to public transport and picking up heavy items such as your luggage. Should you think you may require some support after discharge, please let us know as soon as possible so that we can look into any sort of referrals that may be necessary for yourself. We also advise patients to try to get their home as optimised as possible. Some patients find going around the house with a vacuum, making sure all their washing is done, any sort of ironing and making sure your fridge and freezer are full. As again, you will have some restrictions in place following your surgery. Hello, I'm one of the physios that works here in the spinal team. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what we would expect of you prior to your admission for your surgery. We would like you to be as fit as you can be prior to you coming in. Now that means a little bit of exercise. If you don't exercise, we want you to try and think about doing a little bit. Even if that just involves a little bit of walking and gradually trying to increase your tolerance to that. If exercise is already your thing, we would like you to continue with that. If you like walking swimming by riding an exercise bike those activities are all acceptable you can even go to the gym but we wouldn't want you to be doing anything that involves lifting weights we would also not want you to be doing any impact exercise which might involve running it would be better if you desisted from that we will be going through some specific exercises that we would like you to do they will be in your booklet that you will be given and we would like you to start doing those from now with care obviously but they will prepare you for the surgery and they will lead into after the surgery and all being well help you recover as quickly as possible in regards to the day of your surgery, you will have had a letter. It should advise you no food from midnight, although you can drink water up until 6am. When you wake up in the morning and prepare yourself for coming into surgery, please be advised to have a really good glass of water as this will help dehydration following the fasting period. Any medicines that you normally take on a morning, please take these, unless advised otherwise by your consultant. As per your admission letter, please take advice as to the location and the date and time. When you come in on the day of your operation, you will be seen by several members of the team. You will be seen by the ward nurses, by the pharmacists and anaesthetists. We have many surgical lists on the day, so it may be that you go first, second or third on the list. If this is the case, you will go first thing in the morning if you are first on the list. If you are later on the list, the ward staff will let you know and will allow you to drink water up until two hours of your planned procedure. We do have to warn you of the risk of cancellation as we are a major trauma centre. If you do have a cancellation on the day of your surgery, you will be offered another surgical date within 28 days. And when the ward staff get you ready on the morning, you'll be prepared with wearing some TED stockings, which are to avoid the risk of DVTs, and you'll be given a gown once you are ready for surgery. We advise you to bring all of your medicines and a copy of your prescription chart. 
Hopefully your visit in hospital for these procedures will be one to two days. We also advise to bring a change of clothes, some toiletries, the spinal education booklet if your consultant has already provided you with this and something to keep you occupied if you are waiting for surgery. Please be advised to bring sugar-free chewing gum if you suffer with constipation. This can help stimulate the gut. Please bring some non-slip footwear to avoid any slips, trips or falls whilst you are an inpatient. I'm one of the pharmacists that will be working within the spinal ERAS team, so I'll be managing your medicines throughout your surgery process. Depending on what medicines you take, we may ask you to stop certain medicines before and during your hospital stay. This will always be based on an individual basis, so there may be changes throughout or there may be none at all. Examples of medicines that may be stopped throughout surgery can be anticoagulants or antiplatelets, sometimes referred to as blood thinners, or anti-diabetic medicines such as insulin and metformin. In regards to your medicines, it is important that you do the following. Ensure you have a regular supply of your regular medicines. Bring a medicine supply with you into hospital and make sure you have a supply at home and bring a prescription or an up-to-date list of your medicines so we have an accurate record of what you take. Hello, I'm one of the clinical nurse specialists from the pain management team. Within our team we have a series of clinical nurse specialists like myself and a group of anaesthetists. What we can do is we can come and see you post your surgery if you require a specialist pain intervention. It is likely that you will have some pain after surgery. This is quite normal. Regular observations will be taken by your nurse to review your pain score. You will have prescribed analgesia individual to you and your type of surgery. The aim is for you to be comfortable enough to deep breathe, cough and mobilise. Here within Leeds Teaching Hospitals, we utilise a pain scale 0 to 3. Take this very simply as 0 as no pain, number 1 as mild pain, 2 as moderate pain and 3 as severe pain. The nurses will regularly come round and ask you what your pain score is. Just simply reply 0 to 3. After your operation, you will take tablets to manage your pain. If your pain is increased, we may start you on a machine which is called a PCAS. That stands for Patient Controlled Analgesia. Your anaesthetist will choose for you which is the most appropriate tablets or PCAS prior to having the operation and have this discussion with you. Post your operation, try and be in control of your pain and be mindful. Simple things like position changes or distraction therapies. Make sure that you communicate with your nurse when your pain increases. This way the nurse will be able to get you some extra painkillers to make sure that your pain is adequately managed. You will go home with some pain medications, but please have a supply of paracetamol at home. This is so you can continue to be comfortable enough to progress in your recovery at home. When you go home, your GP will be informed of your type of surgery and also what medications you will go home with. There is evidence to suggest that receiving a pre-operative dose and a one-day short course of gabapentin can help with post-operative pain. You may be offered this on the day of your surgery if you are having a decompression, microdiscectomy or a one level fusion surgery and this is if you are not already taking and if you are not allergic to gabapentin. Please make the ward staff aware on the day if you feel that you may be eligible for this trial. Following your surgery it is expected that you will still experience some of your preoperative symptoms. Operations for the neck are usually to avoid deterioration of your symptoms however some pain can be resolved. You will have some surgical neck pain this should be managed with oral analgesia. Following your surgery due to the nature of the location of your surgery it may be that you have a bit of a sore throat and some swallowing may be different. If swallowing does become problematic we can refer you to the speech and language team to assess your swallowing. Sometimes your symptoms can feel slightly worse following your surgery due to the inflammation and the digging around of nerves during your procedure. Nerve function will obviously take time to heal and recover. This can take up to two years to see what the end result will be following your surgery. We advise that you to move regular and often and you will be seen by the physio whilst you are on an inpatient. When you return from surgery, you will have a small incision to either the front of your neck or the back of your neck. We advise you not to change this dressing unless it is soiled. You can shower after 48 hours. 
Some people have sutures, some people don't. The majority of people having cervical surgery come back from surgery with glue and internal sutures only. But the ward staff will inform you should you need any sutures removing by your practice nurse. The dressing should be removed seven days post-operatively. This can be done either at home or if you prefer it can be seen by your practice nurse. Should you be concerned about anything to do with your wound, such as any swelling, any redness, any odour, any pus from the wound, or you have a high temperature and feel unwell, please do not hesitate to give us a ring. If it's out of hours, please ring one of the surgical wards and they will advise you accordingly. In order for you to be assessed to go home fit and safe, you need to be passing urine with no problems, you need to be eating and drinking, you may get some post-operative nausea. Please let nursing staff know if this is the case and we can get some anti-sickness prescribed. Your pain needs to be manageable with the pain relief offered to you by the nursing staff. If it is a problem, please do let one of us know. Your wound should be okay with no problems. The ward doctor will complete your paperwork. This will be sent to your GP and you will receive a copy. The details included will be the procedure you have done, any recovery goals and medicines you will be sent home with. After your surgery, you might find that you have got quite severe neck pain. That is to be expected but not to be worried about. We would like to think that any arm pain that you had pre-surgery will have been helped or alleviated. There's no guarantee of that. But don't worry, if you still have some arm symptoms, it can take time to resolve. What we would like you to be doing as soon as possible after the surgery, if your blood pressure and other observations that the nurses will take permit, is to be getting up and about as well as you are able. We would also like you to think about starting the exercises that you will be now familiar with. Don't worry if you've forgotten some of the details, we will come round and see you and go through them again. The aim of the surgery is mainly to prevent deterioration, although there is no guarantee of that either. But don't be concerned if you are still in quite some pain. It is quite natural for you to have some. All being well, we'll be able to get on top of that. And improvements can take time. So any arm pain or neck pain itself that you may feel is not as you expected can take time to resolve. If you do feel that things have gotten worse or deteriorated, have a word with any of the nursing staff, or ourselves for that matter, or the doctors, and we can look into that. We are now going to go through your specific neck exercises that we would like you to be doing. The first one is where we wish you to take ears to shoulders. First going one way, then going the other way. Ideally, you would be sat to do this exercise and sat up nice and tall. Only go as far as is comfortable. A little bit of discomfort is acceptable, but not excessive pain. The second exercise is where you take your chin around to each of your shoulders in turn. First one way, then the other way, and again, a little bit of discomfort is acceptable, but not extreme pain. If it is too painful, don't go as far. The third exercise that is directed at the neck is what we call retraction. Now this is where you're taking your head directly backwards. It is a likened to giving yourself a bit of a double chin. So looking from the side, perhaps easier to see, and we just draw the head directly backwards. And this is just a gentle movement. Nothing extreme. So the next exercise is directed at the arms. Simple enough activity, it is just bending your elbows, taking your hands towards your shoulders and then straightening them out. You can do them alternately, or if you wish, you could do both arms together. Again, listen to what your body's telling you. You will know if you've done too many. A little bit of discomfort's acceptable, but no more than that. So the next exercise is directed at the shoulders. Tend to stiffen up if we're not too careful. Pain can have that effect. So we just gently want a little bit of movement. Raising the shoulders up towards the ears, nice and slowly, feel a gentle stretch. And then let the arms relax back down again. Can be done sitting or standing. If you're sitting, make sure you sit tall. If you're sitting standing, again, make sure you're nice and tall, no slouching. 
So the last of the exercises directed at the arms and shoulders together. Both arms look after each other so you can gently hold hands and then bring your arms forwards. Movement coming from the shoulders. Reaching forwards and up as far as is comfortable. Should help ease any stiffness but you shouldn't go into extreme pain. If you do have pre-existing shoulder issues do not force it. Gently up gently down all the while trying to keep the body nice and straight so this is all about progression over the course of the next three months we want you to be gradually increasing your levels of activity continue with the exercises but go cautiously with that you can gradually increase the number of repetitions that sort of thing that you are doing there are also a few things that we don't want you to do we talked about it pre-operatively we didn't want you to be lifting anything particularly heavy and that remains the case for these first few months anything more than your pot of tea is fine but a full kettle is too heavy bear that in mind what we also want you to be cautious of is that we don't want you to be moving your head too quickly but if you take all those things into account gradually increase your level of activity and try to do things as normally as you can we'd advise in regards to resuming driving that you wait a minimum of two weeks and then you are safe to do an emergency stop you are fine to travel as a passenger you need to be able to have full function and minimal pain before resuming driving you need to be able to rotate your neck to each either side so that you have full vision whilst driving. We do advise that you inform your insurer, however, you do not need to inform the DVLA and this should not affect your premiums. However, it is just surely for your protection should anything occur. In terms of going back to work, office workers usually can return after six weeks. Manual workers sometimes need 12 weeks and to return on lighter duties if necessary. Please contact the spinal team if you're unsure. Once you are fit and well to be discharged, you will receive a two-week telephone call with the spinal nursing team. This is just a very quick call to ensure all is well and there are no problems with your wound. At six to eight weeks, you will receive a routine follow-up with the spinal CNS or the consultant. Should you have any concerns before then, please do not hesitate to get in touch with the spinal CNS. All our contact numbers are in the back of the spinal education booklet.